Hi friends in today's episode i am just going to give you some idea that are required about understanding the uh, data types in python so at the end of the session uh, you will get an idea for the following questions what are primitive and non primitive data types what are mutable and non mutable data types how to declare values in python for different data types and how to find a type of a variable and how to trace the memory location of a variable understanding about the data types is very important in any programming language because you're going to play with data because the entire journey of a programming cycle you need to know how to handle the data so for that you have to have some better understanding in handling the data so data structures data structures are nothing but the way that we organize the data so normally in python uh, or in any any other programming languages we have two different data types one is primitive and another one is a non primitive primitive data types or means that a basic operations or they are the built in data types whereas non primitive data types are like uh, they have some advanced features so normally the primitive data types are a numeric boolean string and character numeric in the sense we have a integer float complex uh, again after explaining about all these data types i will give you some example for each and every data type but however in the upcoming sessions i will make a separate episode that consists of various uh, calculations and various methodologies for each and every data type so in this video you'll just get a overview such that wherever i say about any data type you will get to know oh what is the data type because of uh, by just by watching this particular episode fine a uh, numeric means integer float and complex boolean means something true or false and strings and characters in python uh, we don't have something called character a character is a string of literal one so normally character means a single word right a single letter sorry not a word a letter so a string is a group of letter we call it as a word so in python ca uh, normally character means a single letter so we call that as a string of literal one that is called a character and secondly in all other programming languages we will be declaring the data type a uh, explicitly explicitly in the sense uh, let me show you for an example uh, for integer data type we write int a is equal to 10 but in python there is no need automatically when you give a is equal to 10 it will understand it is a data integer data type when you give a is equal to vt gesture automatically it will understand it is a string data type so that is how uh, explicitly we don't want to declare any data type and uh, this these are the built in data types like numeric boolean string characters and non primitive data types if you see sequence and non sequence sequence means ordered way in what order you feed the record in same order you will retrieve the record that is called as a sequence and non sequence means it is not in a ordered way and for the sequence we have tuple list array just remember these names while we start implementing it you will get to know and in the upcoming episodes we will we will be diving much deeper into each of these data types and non sequence data type means dictionary set because we don't get the data in the way we give so it will be in a unordered fashion so it's a very more it's a most important interview questions what are all the ordered data types and what are the no unordered data types um, mostly people used to question you in interview sessions uh, find uh, say the difference between a tuple and a set a tuple it's a sequence data type you get the uh, data in ordered way set means it is in a unordered data type so in most of the interviews you can expect this questions in a core python level and third one is a classes whatever the classes we write and it are called it and as of now you wouldn't be aware about the classes while we discuss about inheritance you'll get to know about it but just uh, think a classes which it has some many functions for an example uh, say for example okay physics is my favorite subject in 12th standard physics uh, we have different subjects like electricity current density and uh, electro um, uh, light uh, optical light and uh, we have some other topics uh, say electro electrostatistics current density thermodynamics and light optics uh, some 10 chapters are available in this 10 chapters we have 10 different we have some every every chapter has its own uh, concepts so how i can say is like physics is a class and inside physics we have different topics and each topic has different concepts they are called as a functions each function has some specific concepts if we say electrostatistics we study about electro electricity there if we study about thermodynamics we study about different chapter there if we study about optical light we study about light concepts so each function has its own con own function to get implemented so that is a that is a, a class and a function 
So all this falls under the non primitive data type. And again, in this, we have something called a list. Okay, just a minute. So in this list is again further classified into a linear and a non-linear fashion. Linear means it has stacks and queues and non-linear means graphs and trees. So just remember this mind map. So this mind map will definitely help you in many, many uh, interview preparations. Going further, if you refer this mind map, you will get to know in what track we travel. Fine. Now, before discussing about the mutable and immutable data types, I want you people to understand the different data types and how to implement them. For an example, uh, say integer, how to define an integer in Python. Let me zoom my screen. So integer, as I said, we don't want to mention the type. So A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20, and C is equal to A plus B. So when we when two elements are same data type, we can actually do the addition performance if they are in the integer data type. So C is equal to A plus B. So now automatically when I run this query, I will get the output as 30. Now if you are not sure about the data type, again you have a specific keyword called type. For an example, this particular output, uh, let me let me write one take on code and let me copy and paste this. So actually I'm running this query here. So type of C, I need to know what data type my output is. When we add two integers, obviously the output is integer. Then we have something called a float. For an example, FL is equal to uh, 220 point something I'm giving like this. Now I need to know the data type of this F, um, F, FL. So it has decimal points. So we call it as a float. Again, in my upcoming episode of format specifiers, I will uh, give you some basic ideas like how we can get some desired data points alone from this float. Next is about a uh, complex. So saying about a complex number, see any, any variable comp is equal to normally we have studied in a complex, right? I power square is equal to minus of i, i power cube is equal to i, i power 4 is equal to 1, a complex number we have where we apply a real value and a conjugate, real value and an imaginary value. Normally, a complex number is a combination of real value plus an imaginary value. A real value is something like an integer value, like plus or minus value will be there and we have plus or minus imaginary value. Often in max, we denote it as by the term i. So, hope you remember this kind of equations like 2 plus... Uh, 3i right but in python the way to represent a complex number is 2 plus or minus instead of i you have to put j so let me try to print the data type of this comp now you can give any name so com s b whatever this name has nothing to do with your uh, output so it is actually giving it will give me the output as a complex fine next we're going to have something about a boolean function a boolean function is nothing but a uh, See, option 1 is equal to capital T true and option 2 is equal to capital false. You don't want to put any quotes and all. So, capital letter T true, capital letter F false. If you give this, it is considered to be a Boolean expression. So, the output of Boolean means yes or no type. True means yeah, it is yes. Uh, for false means no. So this is about the boolean expression so obviously we'll get the output as a bool and what about a string a string is nothing but a group of letters so for an example a is equal to sorry um, i just ran the code a is equal to vt gesture so let me try to print the type of a now so vt gesture it's a String character again integer float string. We have some specifications how many characters it can hold how many number of values it can hold So that I will make a separate episode because that will be very much useful for an interview preparation So in that I will make a separate episode and I will add it in the above card So while if you're watching this video in future you will get such that you can have a quick recorder like how many number of values integer words how many number of values strings holds. However, we're going to make some separate episodes. So in that episodes you will be covering that much topics and uh, it's a string now character uh, character is nothing but a string of literal one so how i can write that is now say a is equal to simply quote and i 
So again, you will get the output as I'm just printing, I'm overwriting the A value, again you get a string. Now we are moving to a sequence data types. So coming to the sequence data types, we have the first one is tuple. How do you make a tuple? So to understand about this non-primitive data types, three things uh, you have to know. The things are, uh, one is, this is, this kind of bracket, we call it as a parenthesis. Another one is a curly bracket. And third one is a square bracket. So these things you have to know. So for tuple, we make use of a parenthesis. For tuple, we make use of a parenthesis. For set and dictionary, we make use of a curly bracket. And for list, and in case sometime of an array, we make use of a square bracket so these things please make a note now for declaring a tuple any variable name is equal to followed by 1 comma 2 comma 3 so when i try to print the type of t what you will get it's called as a tuple again you can give some single value also like 1 comma but you have to give that comma this there's a parenthesis and comma is highly recommended one comma yeah tuple another way of declaring a tuple is like I'm giving another variable name, parenthesis, again another one parenthesis, 1 comma 2, put a comma, 2 comma 3, comma, 4 comma 5. So you have some different questions. Why we need tuple? What are the uses of tuple? Hold on. As I've mentioned, I will make separate videos in depth for each and every data type. At that time, I will cover you the entire topic about each and every data type in detail. So this is just a basic. Now, let's see what will be the type of this double T. So, it's again a tuple. Come on. Yeah. Next one is set. So, normally this is one of the interview questions. A difference between a tuple and set. A tuple will fall under a sequence data type and set will fall under a non-sequence data type. If you actually refer this uh, particular... Uh, diagram you will get to know so it means that set is in a non-ordered fashion whatever the order you give you cannot retrieve the data in that particular order so that is a set so let me discuss a set later first we'll discuss about tuple list and array since they all fall under the same concept of ordered manner and list let me make a simple list so let it be lst is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 okay and uh, yeah, so the, let it be and uh, let me remove all this which I've already practiced. Now I need to know the type of this list. So you can verify it. If you want to print instead of type, give print. Okay, list. Now second way, this is a simple list. Now I'm going to show you a list comprehension. Let it make let make this as a uh, simple list. Now we're going to discuss about a list comprehension. List comprehension means a list within a list. For an example, list is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma again on square bracket 12 comma 34 comma 5. So we can again you can, again you can uh, add comma you can put anything like 5 comma thing. So this is a list within a list. Try to run this. So it is also a list. It is a called as a list comprehension. So uh, next, we'll try to uh, guess what will be the data type for this guess. So guess is actually having a list inside this parenthesis. It means that a set containing a list, correct? A set containing. If you have this uh, parenthesis, we call it as a tuple. We call sorry, we call it as a tuple. A tuple con containing a list. What will be the data type? Obviously, the data type will be a tuple because the Python interpreter will actually see the first thing, uh, the out inner and the outer phrases. So, outer we have the symbol for tuple, tuple parenthesis. So, it is considered to be as a tuple. And similarly, if you're going to do the same, if you have a list here, and now I'm going to pass a tuple value, 1, comma 2, comma, 
3 comma 5 let's see what is this this should be a list got it because the outer layer consists of a symbol for a list and next one is about an array what do you mean by an array so normally array is a collection of homogeneous elements homogeneous means if you start giving integer value you should give only integer value if you start giving float you should give only float if you start giving string you should give only string but in python while using array we can pass a list a list is a collection of different data types for an example uh say here we write one code uh list 3 is equal to 1 comma 2 comma hi let me g okay type of lst now see this type of lst 3 so i am passing oh sorry i have missed the curly braces here i am missing the square bracket here okay now if you see here oh, i have given this here okay so it is actually containing integer data type as well as a string data type that is a list but if an if it is an array you can give 1 comma 2 comma 3 same integer data type or you can give hi hello welcome string kind of data type so we cannot give uh, dissimilar data types only dissimilar data types a different data types is applicable only being list in array we can make only of a single data type but we can pass this list into the array and we can get the output as an array so an array is a collection of homogeneous elements and a uh, uh, list is a collection of homogeneous elements or it can also be a collection of it also be a collection of heterogeneous elements so for implementing array uh, import numpy numpy is a module if you are not sure about the term for module package please watch a link in the above card yeah so we'll get to know the difference between all those terms so import numpy as np so i am import numpy is a module i am importing and i'm abbreviating this numpy as np if you are not abbreviating this numpy as np then what you should write as a is equal to you should you can write here numpy dot array you have to give this parenthesis inside a list bracket and you can pass a list of words 30 comma hi i am passing a list within an array and i get an output as an array so every time you can't uh, type that numpy right for that reason alone i am making as np okay what are not only np anything you can write if you want just n also you can write you can write any n also for time consumption now let, let we see what is the data type for this a n dot array 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 30 comma hi so obviously we will give a n dimensional array so it's a numpy n dimensional array so till now tuple we have discussed list we have discussed array we have discussed all these three are a sequence data type in a non primitive category next one is about sets and dictionary what is meant by a dictionary for dictionary we make use of a curly braces and a dictionary actually it consists of a let me move it up a dictionary normally consists of a key and value pair key and value pair say for an example um okay admk means jay lalita like that it has a key value admk that refers to jay lalita similarly in a dictionary how i can write it as for an example okay let me make it a countries and capital or states and capital uh, as i am from tamil nadu tamil nadu i can keep i can keep a column i can write it as chennai after that you have to give a comma this is a way you write a dictionary again it doesn't mean again you have to give a string data type for an example i can write like code you can write any uh, integers like 6000 6 lakhs so again you put comma you can write question so this is the way you write a dictionary so let me type the data type whenever you pass a string value put that quotes if it is not a string value there is no need so it is actually taking time come on come on come on come on come on it's a dictionary so a dictionary has a key and a value pair this key refers to this particular value okay and next one set 
set is also a form of a non sequence data type we cannot retrieve it in an ordered format so uh, how we can uh, write a set is like say st is equal to for set we will be making use of same symbol that we use for a dictionary the curly braces but it has single values let's type the data type for st so i am just passing the values like uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 56 and i'm just oh sorry i just double braces actually came so it throws here let it be st okay now let's see what happens bear with me so in the meanwhile let me write another code what happens so set is the output we have received now what happens if i give any uh, string data type say gi gu so added to this numerical data types i'm also trying to find whether i can add different data types to the set yeah it actually accepts it so this is the way uh, for an example let me change this std std again it is a set so this is how we define different data types in uh, python if you are sure about these data types you can have a very good beginning in python again i have not explained about the uh, queues stacks graphs trees and classes all these are advanced concepts once we clear these basics we'll discuss about it and again uh, this is not just intro about the data types i will be making different videos for each and every topic integer itself it has lot and lots of concepts string alone it has lot and lots of concepts so we will be discussing that in detail and two more things what is mean by a mutable and immutable data types how to get the id of a particular variable i did not explain so this video itself consumed 22, uh, 22 minutes so in my next video of this continuation i will explain you what is a mutable and immutable data types until then bye